So in today's lecture, we'll be learning a new type of beam, which is called as a T beam. And here, what I've shown is uh, I've drawn this in AutoCAD, and uh, this is a normal or a regular frame type of construction that we do. And these are your columns. Columns. These what you see here are your periphery beams or your primary beams, and here these are your secondary beams. which are connecting your primary beams like this okay this is a normal uh, way of constructing so and this this the view that you are seeing here is from the bottom side and the view that you are seeing here is from the top side now consider that i cut a cross section here i take a cross section like this okay let's say i just cut it from there so what i'll be seeing is this and here i can i can form two shapes here of the beam first shape is called as l beam you can see how a l is being formed here and the second shape is called as a t beam you can see how a t is formed here and this you this l beam and t beam can only be formed if the construction of slab the slab and the beams is done together or monolithic when i say this word monolithic it i mean that when the concrete is being poured for slab and for beam it is being poured together it is not like your beam is constructed first and then the slab is constructed that won't be called as a monolithic construction a monolithic construction would be your slab your beam they are casted together and in such case you can take a advantage of t beam and l beam and l beam as you can see in this entire uh, system it it is only at the corners and t beams is in between this can also be a t beam right and here it is again an l beam so l beams are at the corners t beams are in between now what exactly is this t beam see you can either cast a t beam separately like this okay you can either cast it as a separate t beam which is specifically designed as a t beam only or you can take the advantage of slab and beam being cast monolithic when i say this what i mean is that you did not intend to produce a t beam what you designed was a rectangular beam okay but since you cast your slab and beam monolithically you have the advantage of taking some part of the slab as a flange for this for this web okay so that is the advantage that a designer can take and it uh, and it can be taken so that uh, you want a economical design or it can be taken in some extreme cases to prove that your design is going to sustain so a t beam is a design consideration which can be taken to a designer's advantage when the slab and beam are cast monolithically the designer's advantage for t beam is the wide flange this wide flange that you get here this is called as a flange i will write here so this is called as a flange and this is called as a web web of the beam and generally the web of the beam is it goes till the top okay so this entire part is called as the web of the beam and the sides which are coming out from the web they are called as flanges so this is the web these are the two flanges which are attached to the web so this is a advantage that a designer can take when uh, they are cast monolithically t and l beams are given in uh, is 456 clause 23.1 so i would like you to read that 23.1 clause now some terminology is relating to our t beam first is that the width of the flange is called as bf okay second the depth of the flange is called as df the width of the web is called as bw simple abbreviations nothing difficult to remember here bf is flange df is depth 
of flange and BW is width of web. Now in the IS456 it tells us something about effective width of flange. So if uh, a T beam is given to us the entire flange is not going to be effective in in the bending only a part of it will be effective and that uh, is calculated using these formulas here as you can see so in these formulas bf is equal to l0 by 6 plus bw plus 6 times df l0 is the distance between point of zero moment bf is the effective width of flange b is the actual width of flange bw is width of web df is depth of flange so for continuous beams we have bf is equal to l0 by 6 plus bw plus 6 times df and for uh, yeah and this value of effective width it should be less than bw plus half of clear span on both sides okay and for isolated beams bf is l0 upon l0 by b plus 4 plus bw now i here in the is456 they have given two formulas one is for the t beam one is for the l beam when it is continuous and again for isolated also one is for t beam one is for l beam but i want you to remember only one formula that is for the t beam why because isn't L half of T? If this is T like this, isn't L beam half of this? So even in these formulas, you just uh, look at look at it carefully. If I rearrange the terms here for this formula, if I just write it as B W plus L zero by six plus six D F okay this is what is for t beam for l beam it will be bw plus half uh, if i if i just multiply this by half half of l0 by 6 plus 6 df if i multiply this term by half i get the formula for l beam so if you multiply this you can see l0 by 12 plus 3 df same is for these formulas also this formula if i write here as bw plus l0 upon l0 by b plus 4 for l beam i'll just have to multiply this by half that's it you can see it's 0 0.5 l0 upon l0 by b plus 4 so when you are uh, remembering the formulas don't remember formulas for both you might get confused just remember that for L0, B, you should not multiply BW by half because BW is not part of the flange. BW is part of the web. Okay, that's, that's why it is not being multiplied by half. You just have to multiply the other things by half for L beam. That's it. You get the formula for L beam. Alright. Now, we will understand what is L0, what is... Uh, this uh, what does this statement mean that bw plus half of clear span on both sides we'll understand that so uh, let us uh, let us take an example of this uh, simply supported beam l0 is the distance between point of zero moment so if i load this beam by a udl what is going to be the bending moment diagram? It's going to be a parabola. And for this parabola, the point of zero moment is this, this point and this point. So L0 is nothing but distance between them. That's it. So L0 is the effective span of this simply supported beam. Okay. And for a continuous beam, when I say for a continuous beam, it is uh, if I try to draw a bending moment diagram for a continuous beam I will get something like this okay not necessary like this only but it will definitely not be zero at uh, at the supports 
so where are you essentially getting zero moment you are getting zero moment between year and year if you see closely these are your zero moment values so your l0 will be distance between them this will be l0 in in case of a continuous beam okay and to uh, and we have a empirical formula for that we can say that l0 is almost equivalent to 0.7 times effective span so if if i calculate the effective span then and if i multiply it by 0.7 i will get this distance because this distance is almost 70% of my effective span and here it was 100% total and here it is 70% that's it okay and uh, what was that uh, uh, equation b it should be less than or equal to bw plus half of clear span on both sides for continuous beams for isolated beam it should be less than equal to b which is nothing but your actual width of flange correct so what it is saying is bw plus half of clear span on both sides what it means is that if i am having a slab i'll just use a different pen so let's say this is a slab and i am having my beams here like this and here okay so the t beam uh, let us say i am considering a t beam effect here this is my t beam the the width of this the effective width of this should be less than or equal to bw this is your bw right bw plus half of clear span this the distance between edge to edge is called as clear span clear span on one side and this is your clear span on other side so it is bw plus half of clear span on both sides so it will be half of this clear span and half of this clear span so this distance plus bw plus this distance so your effective flange effective width of flange should be less than bw plus half of clear span on one side plus half of clear span on other side i hope you understood that point now this t beam is given in is 456 2000 section g1 page is 96 so you will have to check this section g1 and page 96 and please again i am telling you these uh, is codel provisions whatever clauses are there they are very important to be mentioned when you are solving a particular numerical so a t beam has to be analyzed in two cases first is when your xu is less than df and uh, second is when your xu is greater than df okay the first case when your xu is less than df see this is the stress diagram that we have been seeing from a long time this stress diagram we are very uh, well aware of here the neutral axis depth is this correct if this neutral axis depth is less than your depth of flange then this is the first case when xu is less than or equal to depth of flange second case is when xu this neutral axis depth is greater than your depth of flange but in that also we have two bifurcations that when 3 by 7 xu is greater than equal to df and when 3 by 7 xu is less than df okay so what does that mean we have a t beam here and according to this case when 3 by 7 xu is greater than or equal to df 
we will have a stretch diagram something like this where this is your neutral axis depth which is greater than df and this is 3 by 7 xu which is greater than df why is this important for us this 3 by 7 xu because this will tell us that whether the stress in your flange is the stress in concrete in your flange is constant throughout the depth or not because see till this point this point our flange is there and from the stress diagram we can see that our stress is constant throughout right throughout the depth of the flange so we get that idea from there and the second is when uh, the when this 3 by 7 xu is less than your df when this case happens what it means is that the stress variation in df is not constant it is constant up to a certain point and then this parabolic part is starting so that time again your uh, analysis will be different and uh, this detailed analysis we will be seeing in the next lecture so till then take care thank you